most people will tell you that chicken is delicious. Many of us are raising our own chickens so that we can responsibly enjoy the gift of their meat and savor the succulent flavor of a real pasture-raised bird. But the appreciation of the Epicurean delights of the chicken is not limited to the humans on the homestead. Pretty much any meat-eating predator out there also finds chicken absolutely irresistible. You keep chickens for any length of time and you'll find yourself confronting predators of all sorts. They'll test your coop design, push at your fences, dig under the walls, and sometimes, despite your best efforts, they'll get your birds. Going out to do your chores and being greeted by a pile of bloody feathers is an awful way to start the day. But it does happen. It's a big part of learning how to keep chickens. I hope that this lesson in particular can help you bolster your defenses to keep that horrible predator morning as far away as possible. When I first faced chicken predation with my first flock of chickens, I admittedly was somewhat of a lightweight. I cried all morning over the little chicks that I'd lost from a raccoon attack. I railed at myself for my ignorance and I declared deep hatred towards raccoons. And I had no happiness that day as I buried all the scattered bits of feet and wings that had been left behind. Now my emotional outburst was understandable as a newbie. It was a touchstone on my way to learning how to keep livestock, that's for sure. But now years later, instead of hating all raccoons indiscriminately, I think my perspective has matured. I know now that I need to keep my bird safe by being smarter than a raccoon. It's not their fault that they are persistent opportunists and that my first chick tractor had critical design failures. Likewise, every flock manager soon learns that part of keeping chickens is spending time outsmarting all the carnivores who want to take advantage of your delicious flock. It might feel like a battle, but as Sun Tzu said in his 5th century text, The Art of War, If you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. If you know that yourself, but not the enemy, for every victory gained you will also suffer a defeat. If you know neither the enemy nor yourself, you will succumb in every battle. So let's get to know some of the enemy. As we go through this lesson, though, remember that predators aren't evil. They're clever at surviving, and if they find food, they will, of course, eat it. Your job as flock protector is to make your birds inaccessible so that the hungry carnivores will have to search elsewhere for a meal. Now, though it's certainly a grisly topic to discuss, every predator that could attack your birds actually has their own specific MO. And knowing their habits and style will help you either prevent further attacks or avoid them altogether. So here's some of the most common chicken predators and their tricks and trademarks. We'll start with a description of the most common predators and their styles of attack, and then we'll end with ideas on how to deal with them. Now we'll start with what is, in my opinion, the worst predator of them all. I'll spend a little bit longer on it, since it's one that you'll probably have to deal with no matter where you live. And that predator is the dog. Every neighborhood is full of dogs, whether it's the yappy little Yorkie next door in the suburbs or the pack of stray and feral dogs that roams the rural countryside. Every once in a while, there's an exception to that rule, of course, but until you know otherwise, consider every dog, feral, stray, domesticated, and even your adorable, never heard of fly fur baby, as a threat to your chickens. Dogs, unlike many other wild predators, kill for amusement, especially if they are a well-fed pet. To them, catch and shake the chicken is a fun game that they can play for as long as there's a bird that moves. Once the one they've currently got stops moving, they can move on to the next one and keep going. This is why a clue of a dog attack on your flock is total devastation. Every bird killed, but few or none even eaten. If a stray or feral dog is messing with your birds, they may do a more wild style hit and run, grabbing one bird and running off with it. Dogs are also intelligent enough to try to break into a coop if they think they have a chance at food. Some are quite capable diggers and they can tunnel under the walls of a coop to gain access. Others may try to rip a coop apart. Here, I'll show you this picture. It's one of my less than favorite photos, but it's from a stray dog attack on our homestead our first year. Granted, this picture is of a rabbit tractor, not a chicken tractor, but you can see how the dog literally chewed through the plywood on the side and got my rabbits. It was also able to rip a layer of chicken wire off the top of the structure too. Now I'll be discussing how to defend against all predator attacks after each one in this lesson, but dealing with dogs is a little different from the wild animals we'll talk about later. For many people, dogs are like members of the family, and conflict with your chickens can make that relationship complicated. Now, if the destructive dog is your own, you may need to consider thoughtfully rehoming it if you want to keep your chickens. Some dogs' prey drive is just too strong that you can't teach them to not want to play with your chickens. Regardless of breed, every dog needs to be evaluated as an individual. Some can handle it. Some will be flock protectors even, but some won't, no matter how hard you try to train them. 
but sometimes the problem dog isn't yours. If you know that your birds were harassed or killed by a neighbor's dog, it's time to have a chat with them about respectfully restraining their animal before anything else is killed. You may need to provide proof to them to convince them that their precious poochie poo is actually a killer. Photographing a scene, particularly if you can document their dog on your property, can be very useful. If your neighbors are decent people, they should take care of the problem. And if they're not, and sadly that's often the case with people who don't care about their dogs roaming around in the first place, then you may need to make a call to your local law enforcement or animal control to give you some backup. And hopefully the situation will not escalate. Sometimes the dog belongs to no one. Many rural areas are dumping grounds for unwanted pets. Uncaring individuals incorrectly think that they can let dogs fend for themselves in the country. All that translates to is suffering and stealing food from strangers, including killing other people's chickens to try to survive. In my area, there are constant waves of abandoned dogs. Some of my neighbors lose cattle and sheep to marauding strays every year. It's frustrating to say the least. So if you're a homesteader living in an unincorporated township and you have no backup to call in, you may have to take a more proactive approach to trespassing dogs. What that specifically means is up to you and your local laws, whether it's spending the money to have a fence installed, building an enclosed run to protect your birds, stringing a line of electrical wire, using pepper spray, or keeping the shotgun handy. Now the next predators we'll discuss are close relatives to dogs, coyotes and foxes. These canines are well-known aggressors to chickendom. We even have idioms about foxes in hen houses. Unlike feral dogs, coyotes and foxes are solitary hunters, and it's more their style to just grab a single bird and make off with it. If a coyote or fox attack has happened, you'll usually find a few scattered feathers or a bird entirely missing. They can, on occasion, also wipe out a whole flock in a single attack, but it's not as common. Wild canines are intelligent, so they may actually plan their attack for several days before they implement their plans. If you catch sight of a fox scoping out your coop, take the time to reinforce any known weaknesses if you can. Keep in mind that foxes can also be rather cat-like and are capable of climbing up things in a similar manner. Coyotes and foxes are also excellent diggers, so keep an eye out for attempted entry around the perimeter of your coop. Electrified wire or netting can often be used in the case of an insistent fox. That sharp shock on the nose is most unpleasant and should send them packing. Now our next common predator is probably the most destructive after dogs. It's the masked bandit of the forest, the raccoon. These hunters are active at night when you're not paying attention and, then, and they can employ their clever hand-like paws in ways that no other creature can. Raccoons can open simple latches, easily reach through chicken wire, open handled doors and climb over almost anything. Signs of a raccoon attack are unpleasant to say the least. They have a bad habit of leaving bits and pieces all over the place as if adding insult to injury. So if you find chickens with their heads and crops eaten off or if you find disassembled birds scattered all over the ground or if it looks like something grabbed a chicken or a chicken just pulled chunks of it through a fence bit by bit, you've got a raccoon to blame. Fending off a raccoon is a matter of prevention. If they get into your coop, change the coop. Change the door, add a lock, or replace chicken wire with hardware cloth. Though it's more expensive, raccoons can't reach through that. Also make sure that all chicken food and garbage is cleaned up at night. Full garbage cans and easy to access chicken ration are just a welcome mat to a hungry raccoon. The next group of predators you may face are raptors, hawks and eagles in the day and owls by evening and night. You may notice that your chickens are super skittish about movements in the sky, even if it's just a vulture or one of your kid's kites. They're not paranoid birds. They know that it's very easy for them to become a raptor dinner. Signs of a hawk's presence are nervous birds and lots of alarm calls. Signs of an attack are a huge pile of feathers. Hawks will usually eat their prey where they catch it. Every once in a while, a hawk may carry off its prize if the hawk is big enough and the chicken's small enough, though. Owls, likewise, will usually carry off their bird and eat it from some height. So if you notice feathers collected at the base of a tree or a post, that's a sure clue of an owl. If the dead or wounded bird is not carried off, it'll look like it was stabbed or torn with a sharp knife. Those talons and beaks don't mess around. All actions you can take when it comes to raptor attacks can only be preventative. Get a flock guardian or a rooster, put a roof or netting over the chicken run and tractors, and potentially resign yourself to accepting losses to your free range flock as a normal part of every year. Hawks, eagles, and owls are protected by the Migratory Bird Treaty, so shooting and trapping them isn't an option. 
But don't helplessly cringe when you see those strong wings soaring overhead. Remember, these birds, like many of the predators on this list, are hugely important to controlling rodent populations on your homestead. Another predator you may face is the weasel. Typically, these rat and mouse eating hunters can be beneficial to your homestead. When food runs low, however, or when there's a mother weasel caring for a litter, your chickens might be next on her menu. The signs of a weasel attack are birds dead in the coop, with their heads either bitten off or with the back eaten. Bite marks are small and usually all over the neck and body. Sometimes weasels will even go on a killing spree and kill all the birds in the coop, depending on how many birds you have. Weirdly and uniquely, they will often neatly pile the bodies in the corner of the coop, tucking them away for later. They might also leave their calling card, which is a faint skunky smell. Some weasels can fit through a hole as small as a quarter. So if you have them in your area, be aware of any openings in your coop. Mice can actually also open up areas too, so watch for that. If you find a vulnerable area, hardware cloth can reinforce your defenses and cut off entry. And finally, as with many of our predators, clean up extra food and try to keep rodents out of your chicken's area. The mice are what the weasels actually usually after anyway. Now, I've never dealt with bears in my neck of the woods, but I've heard stories and seen the photos of what happens when a resident ursine decides that your poultry sounds like a tasty midnight snack. If a bear wants chicken, it will get chicken, and it will take as many as it wants. You'll know if a bear has visited your coop. They're not subtle. If they've decided that your chickens are their next snack, they will tear into your coop by any means necessary. They're not petite either, so look for their telltale footprints in the soil. Honestly, I'm not really sure what can stop a determined bear. Just don't give it motivation in the first place. Those of you who live in bear country should already know not to leave food and garbage out at night, especially extra chicken feed, because for whatever reason, bears absolutely love it. Bears are not usually out hunting for chickens, but if you've provided lots of attractive edible materials for them around your coop, they'll probably develop an interest in your birds as well. Now there are other smaller predators out there that will also mess with your flock, but not as directly. Cats, opossums, skunks, rats, and snakes will typically leave your grown birds alone. Those are big and intimidating, but cute little chicks and immobile eggs are easy pickings. If you find that you're missing eggs, or if you find chicks eaten through the chicken wire, if you find that chicks are missing entirely, or if the chicks' feet are gnawed off, you usually have rats or snakes to blame. And sometimes you can suspect opossums, stray cats, or skunks. To avoid losing eggs to snakes, collect eggs early and often throughout the day if you can. If you do find a snake in the coop, try to relocate it elsewhere on your property. Rat snakes are hugely helpful on the homestead. They actually may help you get rid of the rats that are also potentially trying to eat your eggs and your baby chicks. Now, if you're mysteriously losing chicks, the best method to deal with them is to build as secure housing as you can. Reinforce stuff with hardware cloth again, build a raised platform to keep them on at night, and use vigilance. Your chicks are your most vulnerable little babies, so don't skimp on their housing. Now, I know all that information sounded pretty dire, but don't let it get you down. As we've discussed, there's many ways that you can proactively prevent or remedy predation on your birds so that you can sleep peacefully at night. So to sum it all up succinctly, the best defense is solid coop design, sound fences, and a clean coop. Most predator attacks happen when you're asleep or elsewhere. So make sure that the structures that you build can stand up to the attack of whatever predators are local to your area. And don't leave any attractants out there to lure them to come close in the first place. If you do lose some birds, particularly in those first few years when you're just learning how to do this, give yourself grace. The best way to deal with this grim situation is to learn from it, take action so that it doesn't happen again, and to keep trying.